Hello everybody, this is uh, General Yanis, and today in Death Card Tactics I will be uh, talking about the crusade um, that we have ongoing with some a couple of friends uh, here. And uh, this is the part four of the Death Card on Crusade. So this uh, at, uh, describes the pre-battle preparations and the 650 point army list that we will be using in this crusade. So today, the 9th uh, of April, the weekend is fast approaching and the first Crusade Games of 2021 uh, can resume. Uh, we, we started the Crusade um, back in, in autumn, but with a different lockdown, so we haven't been able to uh, continue our, our Crusading here. Uh, the, in this series of videos, there have been uh, three uh, parts, so the first uh, video uh, describes the crusade background, some house rules we, we used, and the first army list. Then we had the first battles of the campaign, where Eldar faced White Scars for 500 points. Then it was Eldar versus my Death Guard, where I could uh, get a Death Guard victory. And then in part three, the White Scars uh, faced off with the Death Guard, and again, it was a, a good uh, Death Guard victory. So. After a long time uh, that uh, the, the, the Death Guard has been lost in the warp due to lockdowns, let's say, the Death Guard finally arrives uh, to their destination. Yeah, so we started off somewhere here uh, close to the Maelstrom narratively, and now uh, Death Guard is uh, reappearing uh, in the Pariah Nexus. So we have the book from, from Crusade um, rules for the Pariah Nexus, so we thought to spice it up a bit and, and use some of those scenarios and maps. The Death Guard after this long and strange journey, uh, find themselves quite altered by Nurgle. Basically, it's the new Codex rule, while the Eldar and White Scar forces uh, are right uh, on their heels, so new battles are imminent. So in this video, I will talk about uh, how I adapted my Death Card list uh, of the Crusade to the new Codex, because of course the points were different, the relics were not there, etc. And then I will talk about the show you the updated army lists of all the three factions that are taking part in the crusade to 650 points, and then some of my pre battle thoughts uh, before and after we play. I will be posting the some post battle reports like I did with my 2000 point game and uh, show you some how hopefully uh, how it worked and some ideas during the game and some tactics. But let's get uh, started. So let's start by uh, adapting the, um, the existing crusade list, the 500 point list I had uh, and upgrade it to the new codex. So in this table here uh, was my 500 point list uh, with the previous codex and um, after after two uh, two battles. So my uh, headquarter was a malignant playcaster and I really enjoy uh, the malignant playcaster like building a psyker in in the crusade mode. I think it offers for a good narrative and a good progression, getting new psychic powers, etc. So uh, I had him uh, with the uh, Arch Contaminator Warlord trait. He had the Worm Spitter Relic, which is now is, is gone from our new Codex. And then for his psychic powers, he had Miasma of Pestilence and Blades of Putrefaction. And Blades of Putrefaction is also gone. Additionally, his point cost uh, were 100 points before. Now it's 95, so that was a bit welcome. But I had, I had a few things here to, to, to update at least. Uh, for the troop choice, I used five uh, Plague Marines, um, uh, the Champion with a Power Fist and the Plasma Gun, two Blight Launchers, one Flail of Corruption and one Bolter, uh, but uh, the two Blight Launchers now is not a valid configuration, so I have to uh, remove one of those. Uh, and then, of course, all the points for the weapons and the Plague Marines have been different now that we have two wounds uh, for our Plague Marines. The Good thing for my troops, the Plague Marines, is that they have a, a reached experience uh, points, so they became uh, they received the rank, so they are now blooded. And uh, I rolled for a trait in the infantry table, and I got reroll once to hit, which is really excellent because I don't have anything in my in my roster that gives them um, that gives rerolls to hit. So this is a welcome for the for the Plague Marines here, and I'm really looking forward to using them with this ability. In the elite slot, I had the Foul Blight Spawn. Uh, his weapon um, was uh, was very strong, and damage three with the previous codex, and he had the aura to to not allow the units, the enemies to fight uh, to fight first. And now this has changed. The point cost is also a bit different, so I had to modify here. And then on the on the heavy support, my Plague Burst Scroller has been very uh, instrumental in the first couple of games. I had the Entropy Cannons and and Slugger. 
configuration. Previously, it was only 160 points. Now this is increased. And previously, I had used a requisition point to upgrade the, the previous scroller, the entropy cannons with accelerated entropy stratagem. And this no longer is uh, possible. So this is basically gone. And the entropy cannons now, per default, are, are better. Also, the Plague Scroller now is costing a little bit more, but now uh, hitting on three pluses, I think it will be uh, a good improvement. Uh, it also has achieved the blooded rank, so I, I made a weapon enhancement, um, uh, get, giving it to the mortar, and I rolled to get a plus one to hit. So now the mortar going forward will be hitting on two plus. Uh, so that's, <laughs> that's really, that's really good. And also, uh, one of the battles I won, I could select an extra unit to give a battle trait, and I selected the Plague Scroller, so it also got, on the vehicle table, it got reroll hits of one. And this is really good, because otherwise the Plague Scroller now cannot receive any type of reroll, so now this unit will have it uh, naturally. So, with the new codex, a lot of this list and the points, of course, uh, have changed. There was a lot of things not, not available anymore, and etc. So we discussed uh, in the crusade group how to do so, how to to do this, and we set house rules when when a new codex comes out for the armies that we are playing. As long as we keep the the same unit, uh, let's say, then uh, we can freely update uh, the weapons or traits or relics so that we can we can make the the, the list uh, workable again. And then they will still be keeping their experience and their traits, uh, etc. If we want to add new stuff to them, then we have to to pay uh, requisition points as normal, but for example, to take this relic and, and give him another relic, I, we don't have to pay a requisition point. We just, yeah, change the the previously, yeah, the the, the out of out of codex uh, relic to a new one. So down here in the table was how I modified my list. So uh, for the plague caster, I decided to keep the arch contaminator trade the same. The points are updated to 95 points. And the relic, uh, I, I decided I wanted to go with a wretched uh, plate company because I wanted to build, uh, try to build a strong uh, psyker, even even stronger psyker for the crusade. I think that would be fitting what, what my plans to build a strong uh, evolving psych, psyker in the crusade list. So I selected the wretched plate company, which gives the, the, the possibility to take the relic, the demon's favor. And the demon's favor uh, is improving the pestilential fallout of the malignant playcaster, making it able to do uh, more mortal wounds to nearby enemy units when successfully casting spells. I also used uh, an extra requisition point to to give him the sevenfold blessing stratagem, which upgrades before before battle. Let's say so now he will have this ability. So this allows the playcaster to know one more power. Psychic power from the Contagion discipline, and I can reroll one of the psychic tests per phase. So this, I thought, to, together gives me uh, better opportunities to be able to successfully cast some useful spells. Uh, I can still cast only two per turn, but now I have with one reroll, I would be able to, on average, cast a bit more spells. Hopefully, making some mortal wounds with additional mortal wounds with the demon's favor. For the powers. I kept the Miasma of Pestilence. I think this is one of the best powers we have. Uh, Curse of the Leper, I added. I think it's good, uh, very good with the Contagion Discipline. Um, we're facing Eldar here with the toughness that is not super strong. We also have the, the Space Marines uh, that if they are within our Contagion range, then the Curse of the Leper becomes a, a nice source of mortal wounds, hopefully. And then I took the Gift of Plagues, which gives extra range to the Contagions. Maybe that would be useful. But uh, so the, those are the three powers I've selected. So because I, I gave him this upgrade, his crusade points increased and I had to pay a requisition point. Uh, I had full, full amount of requisition points before uh, and now uh, used one here. <clears throat> then for the troops, uh, the, the Plague Marines, uh, the, 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 the champion, he has the power fist. Uh, yeah, I, I kept the, the weapons, but I had to uh, remove one of the blight launchers to make the, the, the squad valid. And then uh, I didn't have much points, etc. So I just gave uh, the the replacement guy a bolter. So I, in 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 essence, uh, it's the same point cost, but I have one blight launcher less. And yeah, the, this unit will be yeah benefiting quite from this trade reroll once to hit. 
for the fall blight spawn i really liked his ability before and i wanted to, to keep the same ability to to make my units uh, fight first when being charged when when foul blight spawn is close by so i used the requisition point uh, to to use the the relic uh, to take a relic so i will take revolting stench fats and also to compensate a bit uh, the pathogen uh, the, the strength of the weapon i decided to use the pathogen the viscous death giving uh, a strength plus one strength to his plague sprayer and i can reroll the number so this costs 10 points and it, it also uses a requisition points so basically this unit has now a two crusade point count uh, to be almost as useful as it was before let's say but again it can be quite instrumental uh, to use the foul blight spawn uh, with his strong relic and the and the pathogen finally for the for the plague verse scroller uh, basically it was just uh, taking this requisition point to use it to to choose the pathogen or the revolting stentrats here uh, so basically just updating the point 275 and this is basically my new baseline 500 point list that i i had so uh, with the formalities out of the way to make the the list um, the 500 point list uh, according to the the different the, pre the new codex now was the time also to um, to increase the list to 650 points which we were have pre-agreed that the we will increase the size of our, our crusade uh, squads and the fights uh, by 150 points. So the next one will be 800 points. But to go to 650 points, uh, before the new codex, originally I, I had planned to increase the size of Plague Marines, maybe increase the squad to have more bodies uh, to, to, to do so. And I had thought to take a Mephitic Blight Holder. But now with the new point cost of the Mephitic Blight Holder to 140, it didn't make very big sense. Uh, also, it could be pro problematic to increase the, the Plague Marines uh, above 5, to, so they could be uh, subject to blast rules. Uh, so with the, but with the new Codex points and, and the new uh, units and the new rules, I definitely uh, wanted to include the, the Death Shroud Terminators. So I'll just keep these guys here uh, that, that I showed you, the 500 points, and then add the three Death Shroud 450 points. And they just join with no XP and no Crusade points for any pre-battle updates or anything like that. And they are ready to join in um, and and uh, start gaining some experience and hopefully help me um, in the in the games. So my thoughts on the 650 50 point Death Guard list. I, as I said, I'm continuing on the path with the Malignant Playcaster as the Warlord and the HQ. Uh, I think Crusade uh, mode offers a nice progression for psychers and that they can get stronger and it feels quite thematic. I, as I said, I, I chose the Wretched Plague Company to maximize the psyker effect. He knows one more power, can reroll one psychic test per turn. Uh, his Pestilential Fallout uh, with the Demon's Favor is increasing the mortal wounds he can deal. And with this small uh, size of the battles, hopefully he can come close and up and personal and, and cast some psychic spells and deal some mortal wounds. That's that's the plan, at least. And Curse of the Leper and Gift of Plagues, as I said, to capitalize on the new Contagion. Um, it's a minus one toughness that, that the units will are having. And Miasma, as I said, is really useful to protect our units in the, when we have such a small army. Uh, also, uh, it's it's quite good to protect the troops and the, the bodyguards with Miasma. Uh, and it would be nice if I can gain some experience with him and gain some traits that he could be able to cast three powers per turn. That would be really nice and it can be... Uh, this this could, this could uh, happen, so maybe I'll try that or maybe I need to give him some relic um, to, to make him a bit more, give him some invul save or something like this in the Crusade progression. Uh, as I said, for the Plague Marines, I had to remove a Blight Launcher, but they will be re-rolling once to hit, so that's very nice. The Foul Blight Spawn, as I said, added the Revolting Stench Patch that can really uh, help us if, if the enemy is, is charging our units. And added the Pathogen to, to increase his strength. If he uh, gets upgraded, I'm thinking to try to see if I can give him some... Uh, yeah, weapon enhancements from the crusade list maybe adding damage or range to his weapon would be really fantastic uh, and the plague burst scroller uh, really will be uh, 
I, th I think it will be really fun to play with, uh, hitting on three pluses, uh, two plus with a mortar due to the upgrade and re-rolling once with, with the battle traits uh, it has been getting. So happy days for the playing rest scroller, hopefully. And the death shroud have been so good in melee, uh, also in the, my game with um, in the 2000 point list. Uh, add a bit more wounds to the table. They can also be helping to protect the characters with a bodyguard ability. They can also deep strike, giving giving me a bit more mobility uh, than than this uh, this core of the of the army uh, had, and some flexibility in the list. So uh, when I uh, take this uh, list to play tomorrow, I will also roll for the Crusade Custom Plague to get what type of special plague my, my crusade force is carrying and can transmit. Uh, and I don't know what to expect from that. So it seems like a nice extra feature, but I will take that when, when I, I, I show you what actually was rolled and how it was useful in the battlefield. Now, looking at uh, my opponents, uh, the white scars, uh, they have also made some changes and went to a 650 uh, point list. So uh, from their previous list of 500 points, they have made uh, quite several changes. Um, they previously were using an Outrider squad. Now they, those are parked somewhere <laughs> and they left their bikes. And now instead a five-man Eradicator squad uh, is added as heavy support. And uh, one more aggressor uh, joins the, the band here. So the, the headquarter uh, is, is the primary chaplain on the bike. Um, <clears throat> the, cha the chaplain on the bike, uh, the White Scars player, wanted to change his Warlord trait to, to Champion of Humanity. So he, we agreed in the house rules, if you want to change, we can pay uh, one requisition point and, and update, for example, a relic or a trait uh, um, for that. So he wanted the Champion of Humanity, which gives him uh, additional attacks uh, in, in melee combat against characters, etc. Also, a uh, white scars uh, stratagem was used for one uh, one requisition point uh, to to and this allows a character the warlord to take an additional trait from the white scars trait and this is uh, the master rider <coughs> <coughs> which allows the the character to reroll a charge roll and uh, <coughs> he's also at minus one to hit after having advanced if he advances in the movement phase and I'm trying to shoot him then he is at minus one to hit and as I said, the house rules we discussed, we can change traits and relics uh, by paying re uh, requisition points unless there is a major codex and rule changes where we get it for free. So the white scars are down to zero requisition point, but they, they are bringing in this very heavy uh, eradicator uh, squad, which yeah is a bit terrifying to face uh, 10 melta shots. Uh, finally, <clears throat> the, the Craft World Eldar, the 600 point list. Um, they they have uh, a variety of fast uh, units. So the, <clears throat> the 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 first units here were the 500 point list. So it was a Farseer Sky Runner as the HQ choice. Uh, he has the Warlord trade zero the shifting vector, and the relic is the Blazing Star of All. And he has the Doom and Executioner Psychic Powers, 440 points. Uh, he also has a, a psychic uh, enhancement as, because he's blooded drunk, so he has a plus one. Uh, he can deny one more, um, one more psychic power per turn, which is bad news for my playcaster. I, I think the troops are the Dire Avengers with an Exarch. The the Viper is the fast attack uh, unit, and uh, the transport the the Wave Serpent. And then uh, the additions to bring it up to 650 points was adding a heavy support, one war walker um, unit with a bright lance and star cannon, and then another uh, HQ character, another psyker, the warlock skyrunner is added. So, uh, um, so two characters that are psychers and they can deny and cast a lot of spells. So uh, versus the Eldar, I would not be <laughs> in the psychic uh, superiority, let's say. Um, so this is this will be kind quite interesting to see uh, how how that uh, that goes. So a lot of mobility uh, and uh, a lot of a lot of psychic abilities and um, for for the Eldar. So uh, my uh, thoughts on the enemy armies: uh, the White Scars have changed a lot since the 500 points. So a much different army from the previous round with a lot of uh, lots of heavy power now. 
uh, firepower or the the multi melta and i can't say i'm i'm really thrilled uh, to face uh, five eradicators and five, four aggressors so there are nine models uh, that are toughness five uh, three wound models and then you could argue that they are not as fast they are only moving five inch like death guard but the, the issue with the white scars is that they can uh, all these units they could advance and they can shoot their assault weapons both the eradicators and the aggressors have assault weapons so they can just freely advance shoot their weapons with no penalty and also they can charge so this is the white scars chapter tactic so on average they could be moving let's say eight, eight eight, nine inches per turn shooting and the aggressors could also be charging. So they, they are um, tough to take out with the three wound models. Uh, most of our weapons, uh, the weapons in my list now are mostly damaged too. Only the entropy cannons have have a, a three plus D3. So I'll have to, to see how I can, uh, I can take care of this uh, big threat here. And then for the Eldar, as I said, uh, they have added additional uh, Psyker in the army, and uh, their, uh, their Farseer Skyrunner is more potent than the Playcaster. He has some abilities to reroll more, and etc. And I can only deny once with, with the Playcaster, and he can be able to cast four spells in a turn and deny three. So uh, on the Psychic, I'm a bit disadvantaged. Uh, and last time, uh, I had the nice good old uh, five uh, plus feel no pain disgusting resilience and it protected uh, my death card from mortal wounds coming from the psychic it saved me the game actually with the eldar but the new disgusting resilient does not help with mortal wounds <laughs> so this will be quite interesting at least the plague marines now have a bit more wounds uh, to sustain a couple of mortal wounds before uh, two three mortal wounds would wipe out uh, half half the, the plague marine squad so uh, and of course many fast units for for the presence on the board taking yeah they, they could be probably flying loops around my units but let's see i hope the resilience can help and um, the the i have a bit more heavy firepower uh, for against the vehicles here but let's see so uh and here uh is a is a pre pre-battle narrative uh, I, I will not read this but uh, trying to explain that the death card have arrived in the new place and they have been altered by the the warp and the death shroud terminators uh, and sent out by mortarion for the next phase of of the very important mission that the death guard are are out on so some summary and final thoughts uh, really excited to be able to continue the crusade with the new codex rules and increasing the list to the 650 points i'm eager to see uh, how the wretched plague company will perform and if the death shroud and my plague marines will perform as well as they did in the 2000 point uh, game that i i reviewed in the channel um, last last weeks um, so looking forward to the new rules also trying to see how this new uh, plague of the the specific plague that the custom plague that i will be having in the crusade list how that will do nice also to see the the opponent armies uh, improve increasing and uh, and more painting and so on so we will be will be fun to roll some dice again uh, in the, in the crusade group so uh, will uh, Death Guard be able to hold on to the momentum? Can I can I continue uh, a winning streak? So stay tuned for the post battle reports, uh, and uh, we will have Eldar versus Death Guard, White Scars versus Eldar, and then White Scars versus uh, Death Guard. Uh, so if you like this video, uh, please press like. Um, you can leave some comment. What do you think uh, will be uh, some some things for me to to think about facing the White Scars and the Eldar? Any suggestions or any yeah, any ideas, any any comments on the lists, um, any questions on, on the Crusade rules, I would be happy to answer. And if you have something, I can probably add uh, some explanation in the next video. Uh, and as I said, if you like this video, please press like, leave some comments and subscribe to the channel where I will be bringing you more uh, videos of uh, Death Guard Tactics and Warhammer. If you further want to support my my uh, my efforts uh, please visit my patreon page and with these uh, words uh, general yanis is signing out stay safe out there and bye bye